Hi everyone and welcome to a digital piano shootout here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. Today we have the Kawai ES920 and the Roland FP90X. Two top of the line portable digital pianos from Roland and Kawai. Man oh man have we been waiting to review these for months and today we're finally getting the chance. We're going to be talking about their actions, comparing their piano tones and engines, their speaker configurations, everything that we think that you would want to know and care about in making a decision between these two instruments. If it's the first time that you're joining us here on the channel, we'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that when we come out with new videos, which we do all the time, you'll know about it and you can come and watch us and join us for more piano exploration as we do on a weekly basis. So without further ado, let's get started with the comparison of Kawai's ES920 and Roland's FP90X right away. Today's video was at least six months in the making. I don't know, maybe longer. I kind of lost track of how many days it's been since I started wishing for an ES920 versus FP90X comparison. The 920s came in much earlier uh, than the 90Xs did, at least for us. I mean, when manufacturers distribute globally, certain markets are able to accept them earlier when the products pass their safety standards and then there's uh, supply chain uh, constraints and certain markets get prioritized, yada yada. Anyway, needless to say, uh, we've been waiting for the opportunity to compare these two instruments for quite some time and I know our customers have as well, as well as the you know, broader community that uh, we're so uh, grateful to be able to connect with out on YouTube. And today is that day. Uh, it is a really beautiful choice between these two because this the uh, contrast is so stark and I actually don't really know that I have a musical favorite here. 
Um, but I can tell you that it's really easy uh, to point out the differences, talk about the differences, uh, highlight those for you, uh, so that uh, you, know, you can decide what one might be a more appropriate fit for your own musical needs. Because we're talking about musical needs here. It's not like one breaks and the other one doesn't. We're, we're really talking about shades and preferences here. So 90X on my left, ES920 on my right. There is about a $500 difference between the two. The Roland is the more expensive uh, between them, but they're not dramatically different in price. I mean, they're, they are focused, I think, towards the same customer. Uh, and the Roland FP60X, from a price standpoint, is a little closer to the ES920, but from a spec standpoint, these two really are the best comparison. So like I said, we've been wanting to do it for a while. Let's start with the speakers. Uh, the FP90X uh, carries a 60 watt rating, whereas the Kawai has a 40 watt rating. Um, both of those uh, wattages are pretty high for a portable instrument. Uh, and by, I guess, implication, there's also some weight differences uh, between these two because there's a little bit extra girth to the amplifier. Uh, Roland also uh, has maintained a kind of a combination of wood, metal, and and uh, plastic for its case. Kawai made a very deliberate choice to really slim down the weight on the 920 as much as possible. They've taken a bit of flack for this for people who really liked the fact that it was a steel cage around the ES8. The ES920 is much more lightweight. It shed uh, close to 20 pounds or so off the ES8. So for people lugging these around, that's, like, that's a meaningful difference. Uh, but for people who uh, we're looking at the, you know, the case and, and seeing the plastic. Uh, I think they sort of saw that as a bit of a sign that they cheaped out. Uh, you know, talking to the Kawhi people, this was such a specific move to just lighten the keyboard and make it more accessible for portability. So I don't know where the dust is going to settle on that one, but there's a weight difference between these two, and part of that is going to be the difference in the speaker uh, wattage because of the difference in uh, just the number of magnets. There's four speakers here versus two speakers over here. Uh, and the amplifiers, 60 watts versus 40 watts, usually uh, means it's a heavier amplifier as well. The tone generators on these two, uh, brand new with the ES, or brand new with the FP90X, this is their BMC chip, uh, which brings a more advanced version of their piano modeling. This is pure acoustic modeling. Same stuff that you find on their latest LX. Uh, this is progressive harmonic imaging that you have on the ES920, so that's the same engine that you're going to find on like their CA. 59 and I think their CA or sorry CN39 and um, maybe the DG30. So it's it's in uh, a few of their other kind of upper mid range models. It's not their very top, so they don't put modeling on the ES920. So that is another difference between these two. You've got a really beautiful uh, sampled set of pianos on the ES920, and you've got modeled pianos on the FP90. Before we drone on any more about any more specs, I really want you to just hear these two. I've set this up so that uh, there's very little edits to anything here. In fact, there's no edits to anything. We haven't gone in and edited any parameter. What we're using here is the my stage hall stage. Uh, so that's just the uh, default piano modeling engine um, with some parameters that make it a little more ambient but not like drenched in reverb or anything, just a little more ambient. Kind of a large room, small hall, kind of medium studio-y vibe. On the ES920, this is the SKEX. And this has been sampled. This is individual note sampling. Um, Kawhi does not disclose how many layers of sampling are on here. But from the sounds of it, uh, I would say we're dealing with probably at least five or six sample layers here, because it's really difficult to detect any uh, sample stepping that's going on here. And plus, 
the um, you know harmonic imaging engine is pretty good at smoothing that stuff out anyway so I've never really been able to hear much sample stepping going on when it comes to the uh, harmonic imaging engines so I'm gonna play kind of a short passage over here on the Roland then I'm gonna play it on the Kauai and let's just talk about what we're hearing So if I was listening to those two sounds, like as a recording, uh, the first thing I would notice, or what I would observe, is that the Roland sounds like it's a very close miking. Like the detail, um, the presentation of the sound, everything is just so immediate uh, and so right in your face. Uh, there's no, it doesn't feel like there's really any space between you and the tone. Uh, and I don't believe there's any kind of mic simulation in there. One of the interesting things about the Pianotech uh, engine, which is a modeling engine just like the Roland, is that there is a miking, uh, I don't know, module or component to that algorithm to sort of create a sense of distance, a sense of space. They've modeled that into it. Um, and that's completely separate and distinct from any sort of a reverb engine or a convolution reverb engine uh, that's going on. So it's, it's a separate element. And I don't really know, but I suspect it's probably not a part of the Roland engine. So there's just this immediacy to all of the aspects of the tone, where there's just no air between it uh, and your ear. Now there is of course a reverb engine and you can play around with that and kind of create the sense that there is a little bit of distance. 
but it's almost like you're hearing the room as one channel, the piano is another channel, they're kind of mixed. It's not like, it's, it's like they're in parallel rather than uh, in a chain, if that makes any sense. Uh, on the Kauai, um, I, again, I don't have the details of how they recorded this and whether this is a combination of close miking, room miking, and they've all just mixed this as, as you know, a single sample, whether it was a four mic setup or a deca tree, or, I, I don't know. But... It feels like it's more like a binaural sort of sample. Like this is closer to me of what you would get as a player sitting behind the piano. Not necessarily how you would uh, record a piano and then put it on an album, but if you were actually physically behind a piano, how it would behave, how it would sound. And I know that the difference between those two is not, there, there isn't a right or a wrong there. And I've given this so much more thought over the last few months because of all the VST plugins that we just finished exploring, you know, starting January, February, right through uh, to just a few weeks ago. Because almost all of the leading piano VSTs out there, just the software is charging three, four, five hundred dollars for this stuff, really advanced engineering and programming going into these, almost all of them give you the option of whether you want to hear uh, the piano uh, from a player's perspective or hearing the binaural mar um, miking, which is really kind of just a fancy way of saying that they've miked it like your ears would hear it while you were playing it. But they also give you uh, side miking and close miking and you know room miking and then you know surround miking like you know mics way in the rafters kind of thing. They all do that. So there's a time and a place for both. Uh, and it al almost makes it, my impression is that if I was to use one or two of these as a sound source for tracking, the Roland might be more versatile because it's such a clean direct sound and you could manipulate that after and try and create some of that space. But if I was sitting down to play it as a piano, um, I, my ear might gravitate a little bit more towards the Kwai. Um, but I know that that's not a universally held preference. And like I said, I, I know that because of just all the feedback we got from those other uh, plugins uh, and explorations and discussions about mic placement and all that kind of stuff. So that's my first impression of the difference between the piano tone on these two. Just space, like natural, non-simulated space. And this just super close, very detailed. You know, even... That's got a little bit more space to it. But even like church concert, like this still to me feels like a piano that's got close mic, like, you know, two or three mics right in the belly of the piano. But then you're still hearing this 
space around the piano in a large room, or I guess in this case, a church. That's a really beautiful combination. I said in my individual review that the church concert stage setting was my favorite to just play on. Kind of an ECME kind of sound. Both of these instruments have the ability to manipulate that piano sound. We've got a virtual technician on the Kawai, and you can use that on board or with an app. You've got the piano designer on the Roland, you can use that on board or with the app. Uh, something that I really get used to on uh, the, the Roland, and also I'm getting quite used to this on other Kawais uh, and uh, some of the Yamahas uh, that I experience as well, they have this on the app, where you just can go to a few different settings um, and I say setting not in like a, you know, parameters, but like a setting, like a, a space, a, a, um, you know, a, a scene almost. And the My Stage gives you that ability without having to go in and start individually manipulating all sorts of parameters in the Piano Designer. You can just quickly page between all of, uh, you know, these, these different um, virtualizations of, of spaces. And you can do this also on some of the Kawais, like the CA7999 has this, uh, or the Novus 5, Novus 10, they have this. And when I come back to the ES920, I kind of miss the fact that it's not there. Uh, you can obviously go into the virtual technician and edit to your heart's content. 19 different parameters, 21, 19, one of those two. Lots, lots of different parameters. But you have to kind of know what you're going in to edit what you're trying to accomplish. Um, otherwise, there's no quick way to simply page through a number of these presets, whereas on the Roland you do. So that's something uh, that side by side I really uh, value on the Roland is that my stage. From a speaker standpoint, um, there's parts of each that I like. Um, I like the openness and the, and the real sense of clarity that I get um, in the bass of the Kawai for some reason, even though it's a slightly lower wattage. I like the attack um, and the presence that I'm getting in the mid-range of the Roland. Uh, and then in the treble, generally they're both good. Um, I have no complaints about either, but by default I do like the treble section uh, on the Kawhi a bit more. I think the Roland, and I mentioned this in the individual, individual review, there's a little bit of a bitiness um, that's, that's kind of a bit much when you have the volume turned up a little bit more uh, in the piano up here. Really just hits the ear a little bit harshly. It's not glassy, it's just it's like the duplex scaling is jacked up through the roof. And it's just a little more smoothed over here. Moving on from the piano sound, because really that's where both of these have a lot of focus, uh, we now get into a very large difference in the quantity of other tones. We have over 300 over here, and we've got something like 50 over there. Uh, now granted, most of those other sounds are coming from the General MIDI 2 bank. It's not that they're coming from this super beefy bank of highly specialized Roland tones. So, Ah, you know, you could argue that in terms of core sound, they're actually quite similar. But on paper, the Roland does have a substantial advantage in terms of the number of tones, if that's important to you. 
Um, they both have a maximum polyphony of 256 as soon as you get outside of the piano tone. When we're inside piano tone, the Roland has limitless because it's modeling. That's one of the advantages that you get uh, with modeling. They both have an equalizer, and on the Roland you have a three-band equalizer. Kawhi, you have a four-band equalizer. I'm pretty sure both of them give you the ability to go and actually edit uh, parameters on that EQ. I know for sure on the Roland uh, you've got a sweepable mid, and then you can uh, sort of dial in where your focus frequency is for your bass and your treble as well. So even though it's only three, it definitely doesn't kind of uh, limit your ability to go and really edit uh, your mid-range. Kawhi, I guess, just gives you a slightly better option uh, to have two different high points to uh, edit or two different midpoints to edit. Uh, if, again, that's something that your ear is looking for or you think you would uh, appreciate uh, as a player. Um, they also both have fantastic e-piano sounds as a part of that larger library. And I'll just give you a quick sample of what that sounds like. Uh, both of their organs are pretty usable. That first one was, this one's pretty good. A big difference between the other onboard features uh, on these two in terms of its sound generation uh, is the inclusion of an onboard auto accompaniment on the ES920, whereas on the Roland FP90, it's really kind of a software delivered auto accompaniment through an app. You can't get that onboard here without the use of the Piano Everyday app. If you do, then you've got virtually identical functionality, uh, but without it, on board on the Kawhi, you don't have it on board with the Roland. Uh, they both have onboard recorders and certainly uh, the ability to record uh, wave on both is there and record standard MIDI files is on there. It also plays back wave and MP3 and MIDI on both. Main difference is you have the ability to record MP3 on the Kawhi and you do not on the Roland. So that's one small difference. We are going to get to a few other connectivity issues, or not issues, but differences between the two in our very last section. But in terms of tone, uh, that's where we're going to leave it for now. 
So difference in uh, speaker, we got 40 versus 60 watts, um, but a very nicely balanced 40 watts in the Kawai, a beautiful uh, full uh, mid-range and a nice tight base uh, on the Roland. We've got an improved BMC chip over here, oops, delivering uh, modeled piano versus sampled. We've got a really lovely sample set uh, on the Kawai, also delivering 256 notes worth of polyphony. In terms of core sounds, very similar, but you've got the general MIDI 2 over on the FP90, so if sheer quantity of tones is something that is important, well, that might be something uh, to be aware of on the FP90. We are going to take a very short break, and then we're going to be back to discuss the differences in action between these two. Thank you so much for being with us. See you in a minute. There's a pretty significant difference in action between these two pianos. On the Roland, we have the PHA-50, and on the Kawai, we have the RH-3. The RH-3, I believe, has been with us for about four years in that range. And the PHA-50 came out at about the same time. And they both have their uh, communities of support uh, in the industry. Uh, I know the RH-3 is also being used uh, by Nord in their Nord Grand. Uh, and Kawai's actions generally, it's probably one of the strongest suits that Kawai has is the actions that they manufacture. But the PHA-50 uh, is gaining a bit of a legendary status for just how durable and accurate uh, that action is for MIDI output, for triggering, uh, for recording, for all, you know, all sorts of things. Um, they don't feel the same at all. They don't sound the same mechanically um, at all. Uh, I think the one thing they both have in common is that they're both quite sensitive and they really uh, do produce a responsive playing experience. Uh, so I like, I, I like that about both of them, but I think the style of your playing is really going to dictate which one feels more comfortable uh, to you. The PHA-50 has a bit more of a I don't know, it's just a, a bit more of a solid feel to the bottom of the key bed. And if you're playing a lot of pretty more, you know, aggressive contemporary music, I think the PHA-50 is going to feel a bit more at home to you. Uh, now, uh, maybe not a disadvantage, but on the flip side, if you're playing a lot more sensitive music, let's say classical, where it's not just strictly bombastic, uh, you know, uh, Liszt or Rachmaninoff or something like that, uh, there's something about the, the RH3 that feels a bit more acoustic um, for that style of playing. Uh, I think the way that the keys are rounded, I think uh, just the sense of the key depth on the RH3, it just feels very satisfying for that type of playing. Or even a kind of contemplative, quiet playing solo piano, just sort of meandering musically about, which obviously I'm super guilty of doing all the time. Uh, you know, I really love the RH3, but if I'm going to just go and crush out two or three hours of R&B or jazz or something like that, there's, uh, there's just something that feels a bit more substantial to the PHA-50. And it makes sense. I wouldn't necessarily put these two actions as parallel actions. Roland's PHA-4 action is a lot more uh, in line with the RH3 uh, than the PHA-50 is. The PHA-50 is uh, kind of more in the same class as, as what they put on, for example, uh, the CA-49 or the CA-59. It's like kind of a slightly compacted wood key, although Kawhi has sort of a hammer that's approximately in the same physical spot that a real hammer would be, and Roland has kind of the counterweight hammer that sits under the key. The fundamental geometries are not that crazy off between the two. Uh, so, a, a bit of a mismatch, but the price point's so close that the two companies are sort of forcing you to compare these two almost as apples to apples. Um, Kawhi has a micro-textured top to the RH3, whereas Roland, um, the texture visually is supposed to look more like ivory, so there's a bit of a grain to it, whereas this it just it looks kind of just speckled. 
Uh, it's not necessarily trying to mimic anything in the, from the natural world, uh, but it does produce a nice texture, sort of that uh, nice difference between a slidiness and a grippiness to it. Uh, they both have escapement, um, and when you get into really sensitive um, keyboards, sensors, that escapement really improves your level of control in the lowest dynamic ranges. So that's kind of cool as well. But that's generally the difference between these two actions. You've got something that is going to feel nice and sensitive uh, for, uh, let's call it finesse playing. You've got something that's going to put up with a whole ton of abuse over here with the Roland, both with good um, you know, MIDI output um, and then just kind of a, yeah, just a different sense of weight uh, to it. They both weigh out actually very similarly. Um, but um, I would not be choosing one or the other without probably trying to play uh, them side by side if it was possible to do. But I hope that my description has been helpful somewhat uh, to understanding what you might expect when you get behind the Kawai versus behind the Roland. We're going to take another quick break and we'll be back for a discussion on connectivity, accessories, and, and the like. Thanks so much for being with us. So both of these instruments come with matching stands, uh, if you want them, optional, um, matching pedal boards. They both come in black as well as white. You can use them with single dampers, um, the floating uh, sets of pedals, or of course the matched ones. They also both have quarter inch outputs. So if you are gigging with either one of these, that's virtually a necessity. Uh, and, but now we come to some differences that uh, you will want to be aware of. For one, the Roland has a USB audio interface, meaning with a USB cable, you can get digital audio straight to your DAW without having to convert it to some sort of an analog signal first. Whereas the Kawai does not offer that, but they do have the option of recording out MIDI and, or, or sorry, recording out Wave and or MP3 uh, onto a USB stick. So there is a way to get digital audio off the Kawai but there isn't a way to live record it uh, digitally right into a DAW. You'd have to take it out into an interface uh, and then back into the DAW again. Now, if you've got good cables, uh, are you going to actually notice a difference in sort of a real life setting? Well, unless you've got top, top, top gear right through your whole chain, you're probably not gonna notice a difference, but there's a hypothetical difference uh, in quality there, not having to go through two sets of AD converters on the way out and then on the way back in uh, to your computer. So USB audio interface. They both have Bluetooth MIDI and Bluetooth audio, meaning you can transmit Bluetooth audio to them and use their onboard speaker systems or Bluetooth MIDI uh, to connect a pretty wide variety of apps to either one of them. They both come with built-in music stands, uh, which is great. Uh, there is a weight difference, we mentioned that at the beginning, about 53 or 54 pounds for this, 37 pounds for the ES920. So if you are lugging this around, that could be a pretty important factor on your list of uh, decision factors. So there are a few points on which I think it's very easy to draw contrasts between these two instruments. The character of the piano tone, for one, um, especially after having listened to the minutest of detail uh, on piano VSTs, these are miles apart. Um, you've got a Roland which is very detailed, um, full of uh, kind of soundboard and string tone, and very close. You've got the Kawai, which has been sampled in however you know, method or style they're going to sample it, with more air around the sample, more distance from uh, the immediate uh, tone generation to you know where the microphone has picked that up. You're either going to like that or you're not going to like that. Um, but it is a distinct difference in the playing experience between these two pianos. So that's one. Two, you've got a weight difference between these two. You've got 53 pounds versus 37 pounds. 52 versus 30. It's about 15, 16 pound difference. It's not going anywhere. 
who cares? If you're lugging it around, be aware, something to be aware of. It's not that this is particularly heavy for the category, it's just this is particularly light for the category. So that is a second thing to be aware of. Three, you've got onboard accompaniment on the Kawai, whereas you need the app to get onboard accompaniment for the Roland. So if that's a factor, that might be deal breaking or one of those I could care less uh, factors. Four, you've got an action difference. You've got a wood action, maybe just slightly heavier in terms of your, the sense of weight on this, um, but definitely built for a really high level of abuse uh, on with this PHA-50, whereas the RH-3 is going to be kind of more in the middle of the road in terms of the level of commercial abuse that it might put up with. Really completely okay for I would say light to medium duty, professional use, and no problem whatsoever with home use. I don't have any evidence to suggest that this wouldn't stand up under like some really, really trying professional conditions. Um, it's just I know the kind of abuse that I put a keyboard through um, and how impressed I've been with what the PHA 50 has done. So, uh, you know, you can uh, take that for what it is. Um, and then finally, the difference in the speakers. Uh, the 60 versus 40, um, the biggest area that I noticed that is mid-range and upper mid-range projection. Um, the bass, I don't know any, don't notice any difference whatsoever, and I think that's because Kawhi's got these really kind of interesting um, air ports or tone ports on the bottom, kind of creates a bit of a subwoofer effect. Uh, and so even though it's only 40 watts, there, there's no lacking in that, that lower presence. But when you get into your mids, um, I think the Roland does a really great job of projecting that a little bit more. It's a very tight, um, very solid um, mid-range tone. And the tone ports on the back also mean that you could be um, dispersing that sound to other people in the room a little bit better. Two amazing options. I hope you've enjoyed the comparison. I've really enjoyed finally being able to get them side by side. And boy oh boy is it nice to be back in front of real pianos again in the studio, uh, sharing our love of pianos uh, with you in front of pianos. If you've enjoyed the video and you found it useful, found it helpful, uh, we'd really appreciate if you did hit that subscribe button uh, and become a member of our community. Uh, and hit the notification bell as well because we're always coming out with new videos. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube, and we will see you again soon. <laughs>